No. <laughs> Has God stopped doing the good thing that he wants to do for you? Of course. We are human beings. Yes. And he's God. Yes. Has he stopped what he wants to do for you somewhere? No. When we read about the benefit of the benefit of appreciation, when a person appreciates you, it increases your energy to do more. Yeah? If he doesn't, it brings depression. Say, ah, maybe the person doesn't see what I'm doing. Of course you are human. At a point in time, you say, no, I'm not going to do that anymore. You are right. But that one should not stop you from doing the good thing. If he doesn't, God has. God will reward you one way or the other. That's what the Bible says. Don't stop doing good. If you want to owe someone, owe him only to love, nothing more. So don't stop. And what you're saying is, is threat. Don't stop. And, yeah, don't stop. Oh. Oh, no, don't give up. Maybe the person is so testing to see if you're going to stop. The time you stop, they are get you. Okay. If you are doing all that is right and you are wrongly being paid back for, who is the just judge? Who is the just? That's God. God is somebody's name. See, do good. Romans chapter 8, the Bible says, do good to those who even wrongly accuse you. Do good to them. The Bible says, by so doing, it's just like you have put coal or fire on the person's head. Do good to them. Let them pay you back. Do good. But from God, yeah, you can't do good. You can't do good. It's not easy. I've said this quotation in Philippians that I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Have you said that thing before? Yeah. Have you said it before? Then that's why it's so included. I can do all things. Even though you are not showing appreciation, I can do all. Even though you are paying me back with evil, I can do all. And the more you do it, God, you show that you are mature. That's how it is. That's where we are learning. So before you realize, you fell as with your grace, what you are doing now, I don't. God will give you the grace to do it more. You'll be surprised. Yeah. Then I'll catch you. Yeah? So you don't give up in doing good. Okay? There's reward in it. No matter how bad the person might treat you back, continue doing good. Last question, yes. Some say it's not easy. It's not it's not easy to sleep sometimes, eh? Yeah. Uh, Friday. The whole day I could not eat. Eat is easy. But I could not. Was that easy? No. So sleeping, eating sometimes also not, it's not easy. So don't say it's not easy, oh my sister, it will be easy. Okay. Yes. What about if the person knows that like the good you're doing to the person? She he or she knows about it, but she doesn't want to accept the goodness about it. What can you do about it? She doesn't want to accept the goodness. And the person sees it or like he or she sees it but like, the danger on the and 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 you want to stop doing it? Yeah. That's that the only one that was asking. Just, just let it go. It's not, like, it's not like the way you are saying that maybe the person is texting you. The person knows already about it, but what can you do about it? Just uh, let it go. Then everything goes. Just let it go. Yeah, let it go. That's what I think. So let me tell you this thing, eh? If God does not touch your heart, you can't do good. If God doesn't touch your heart, you can't do it. 
So the good you think you do to someone is not you want to do that to them. God taxes your heart to do. Otherwise, he will not tell you to love your enemies. Can you do that? Imagine you don't like Sister um, Gifty. When you see her, then you have a show. Guess what you're going to do? But God said, love her. God knows why, what he can use the gift to do for you tomorrow that you don't know about. Hmm? It's difficult. As human as you are saying, but neglect the word is not easy. Neglect it. Neglect the word is difficult. Neglect it. Hmm? And do it. And have this at the back of your mind. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. And the more you do it, God says, now you are maturing. God can bring some people in your life, not only to help you or to bless you, but he's going to use those people as a tool to work on you. Pin, now we go. Yeah, some people are in your life, they are like that. They come in your life not to bring good things, eh? They won't go. Through the pain, God bring them there for a purpose. Yes. I've had some friends, when their, their, their duty is done in my life, somehow they disappear. I say, God, I thank you, I pass the test. Lord, I pass the test. I say, wow. But looking back, you guys have helped me. Eh? But if I did not understand, I thought they were there to do me harm. But God brought them in my life to push me forward. Yes. So continue doing the good. Let your goodness be neglected. He sees it. He reward you. Amen. <coughs> the last question on the first few points. Alright. Uh -huh. Last question. Okay. We move on to commitment. Oh, Jeffrey. Yes. Jeffrey. Jeffrey. Jeff, yeah. About the appreciation, yes. Right now, if someone buys me a car, I'm, I'm very happy with the car. And some years I got an aspect, I'm taken. And like the best album that comes to me, you know, asking me questions about like, oh, I'm sorry. And I said sometimes I will regret that TV bought me a car. That tell me that I don't appreciate what the person did for me. Thank you. How old are you? You have a bicycle. Who will buy the bike for you? Okay. In case you you can sit down. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. okay. Sit down. In case your dad bought you the bike, his intention is that you use the bike for school. On going to school on the snow, you fell and break your arm. Did your dad intentionally set you a trap so that you break your arm? No. no. The person who bought you that car did not think you would crash the car to a tree and, and break your death and take it. It's out of his question. What you are saying is that let everything be real. I appreciate the person who bought the car for you. But I appreciate you, but right at this age, I can't use the car. I'm 22 years old. I don't need the Ferrari for anything. I think you can give me uh, another thing that worth my age, a bicycle or even a scooter for the start. That's a bigger way of showing appreciation than accepting the car, you don't have a ride device, you go knock the tree, your legs are chopped off. What kind of appreciation are you going to do? You say, you sometimes have to be in the nature. So a bicycle, for example, your dad did not buy the bike for you so that you can break your arm with it. No. You want it about so that you can move from point A to point B. And the time you read it, you Dad, thank you for this gazelle bike you bought for me. God bless you. That's how it is. Amen. Now, we move on to commitment. This is where most Christians, if you don't think of it, miss heaven. Here. So I want you to sit down quietly and listen attentively. Commitment is a state of quality of being dedicated to a cause for activity. It's also a dedication, devotion, allegiance, loyalty, faithfulness, fidelity, bond, adherence, and attentiveness. All of you go to school. You all go to school. You all have your assignment the teacher gives you. Don't obstruct. As a husband, you don't just leave the book and go to the TV. Do you do that? No. Why? 
you know that end of the year there's going to be an exam. And you have to go back to the book and flip all the pages. You've got to fill the exam totally, by all means. But when you come, you are so much devoted to the books that you don't want any single minute to pass by. Some of you, they don't even want to come to church on Sunday because they want to read that book 24-7, which absolutely is impossible, I know for sure. I've been a student before. Mm. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. You can be the best student in the world, whatever. That kind of love, the attachment, the bonds, the, the ahead. Yeah. <coughs> that you have with your book, that's what we call commitment. When it comes to things of God, Christians of nowadays, we are not like that. But then, uh, what time do you start with? Um, morning shift. Five o'clock. Five o'clock. What time do you get up? In the morning. Mm -hmm. Four o'clock. He gets up in the morning. But he starts work at five. My wife starts work at six. Five o'clock is up. But five, ten minutes to six, he must clock, click, click, for the machine to see that you are on time. Talk. If you are late, brother Enoch, how do you feel? It's <laughs> <laughs> something else, right? I was sure what was going to say. It's not good to come to our Yeah. It's not to come much. Earlier. Yeah. So you start by the machine before the time even starts. Yeah. So maybe you can start, you can start from work. Yeah. yeah. Good. Now, imagine you wake up at four, you do everything. You go sit in the car, you start. Meep, 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 meep. How many times? How many times won't you flew? Yeah, talk. You do it, talk. Oh, let's calm down. Let's calm down. You need to go to school early in the morning. There are two in the octant. Kind of negative begin the tooth. You see everything. You know that from your house to the school, 20 minutes fits. You get down to the, uh, the, the basement. Your feet ask you out. Shit, it's like a band. You can go yanke. Who goes soon? Who buys a tire? Tell me now the point the bicycle tire, baby. You get to the feet to your school. The tooth is at the corner. Who can you fool in that? That's it. Mm -hmm. That kind of good food, no? that's what we call commitment. Now let's equate that one to church coming and see. Church begins at nine. If somebody is, uh, the angels are here to clock our card for us, how many will get nine o'clock on their card clock? <laughs> see how we do things? But then, when, because the chef or the boss in heaven will not sack us, we do it anyhow we want it. And that's where the danger lies. From the Ten Commandments, that shall not do this, that shall not do this. You don't do all of them. But your commitment alone can cause a problem. Not only in church activities, but when you grow further up in the um, in your academia, your school, your boss gave you a, 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 a project to handle. Project manager, nine o'clock should be there, you are there ten o'clock. It happens once, twice, they will kick you. So learn how to commit first to the house of God and then to yours. If you commit so much to God's things, he doesn't let disappointment come to your way, like like a bond. He knows that if this girl leaves home at 10 that truck driver who is drunk, before she cycles one, two, three, four, the truck driver will be coming. She's going to kill my girl. No. Something happened. Cause a lecker bank. You will not understand why you're a lecker bank. Eh? She, 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 you finished it. When you left, when you reach that point, as that had already happened, it could have been you. But so God will deliver you out of it. So the more you commit to God's work, 
you cut so many things out of your life for you. But you don't see it. Mm. Let's be honest with ourselves, eh? Let's take one single day Monday. How many weeks do you spend here compared to here? It's the first person to raise your hands up. How many minutes? <laughs> Let's we start from here. Erico, Monday, how many minutes on the Bible? Yes, a number. 15 minutes? 10 minutes? How many minutes? <laughs> be honest, be honest. 24-7. Eric, come on, come on, come on. 24-7. 10 minutes, 24-7. I said, what? Monday, zero. How many? 24-7. Mm, hours. How about 15? Monday. How many? I say only Monday. How many minutes? <laughs> you see, oh, all, we know ourselves. We are all guilty of it. Remember, our main theme, Psalm 119, verse 11. That word have I hidden in my heart, that I may not sin against you. If you don't put this one in your heart, you will by all means fall. So, if God should come right now, who will he take? The man with this or the man with this? Get for yourself. Which one of them are you committed to? If you want to know, this or that? Yes? A phone? Yes. Last time, <coughs> when I brought my iPhone for repressing, I bought this one. I import all my contacts. I had about 1,275 contacts. And then, yeah, I have 100 and something messages I have not been responded to. <laughs> <laughs> I was just sick for three days. Eh? 100 and something, I can't respond to them. Because I feel so weak. But the point is, if I don't have time for this, how can I do what I'm doing? See that? So, brothers and sisters, Let's change the way we do things. Let's commit more to God and then extra chess for this. Not commit to this and extra chess for that. One day you knew before God said, God, I want to get married. Send it for me. A six pack man. You know, God has an answer all prayers. Say. Next three weeks, I'll teach you about prayers. Some of them are even in a before. Don't even get there. I'll teach you on that very soon. So when it comes to commitment, sometimes saying yes to God means we have to say no to a lot of other things which happen to us. People can make the mistake of thinking that our faith restricts our freedom. When it actually fosters it, he says sacrifice free. Okay, that's what I just said. The things that we, are, uh, we, we love the most, our phones, our targets. You know why I bought a very big tablet like that? It's too big, eh? I divide the screen into two. My Bible, this part, my nose, the other side. One salary, I make my nose on one screen. I invest much more money into God's things than in myself. Why? So that when it's rewarding me, my reward should be bigger than anybody else's. So from today, I want you to take this lesson of commitment very, very serious. He says here something. Matthew 16, 24. There's only one way to find out who is there. There's only one way to find out who is there. There's only one way to find out who is there. There's only one way to find out who is there. Oh, no, you need. Right now. I have been so full now. I said, oh, no, I'm going to look at you. Yeah, yeah. You get too much, eh? See, I'm a son of this only fool in the water. Yeah, but you're good to me. 
Are you there? Yeah. Yeah. Are you there? Yeah. They should know where to find out. If you are there, are you sitting there? Can I know you are there? Yeah. Yeah. Let's go. Yeah. 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 Good. Then Jesus said to his disciples, Whilst she is reading, see your coffee is still there. Come and meet your sister. I cannot take anything back home. Come and drink it and eat. Jesus said, If anybody wants to come with me, what? Deny yourself and take your cross and follow me. For whoever wants to save their life will lose it. But whoever loses their life for my sake will find it. If you want to come to Jesus, deny your phone and come and follow me. Who can do that? Don't do this. Just raise your hands up. Then I can do it. Only one person. Because you are not trusting. Brother, put your hand up. You are. Okay, I'll trust you small. Are you sure? Jesus said, deny yourself. I will watch you. Whatever you feel good, put it aside. But now, let's do this exercise. On Monday morning, 8 o'clock, switch off your phone. Off it. Off your phone. 8 o'clock in the evening, switch it on. And see how you feel the gold in that phone. Oh, will, will that be easy for you? Jesus said, if you want to follow me, deny yourself. But now we can't. Now how commitment it is. Yes, does it that work? Does that work? Okay. He just said again, Matthew 37. There's only one way to find out if you are there. Matthew 37. There's only one way to find out if you are there. Matthew 37. There's only one way to find out. What do you want me to find out? Ring really, if you are there. Good. You want twice. You go and take more, more, more chocolate and chop. Uh -huh. Anyone who loves his father or mother. Is your mother like your phone? No. Your mother and mobile phone, which one is more powerful? Mother. Which one do you appreciate more? Mother. And Jesus is saying, if you love your mother more than me, Continue. It's not worth what's going on. Anyone who loves his son or daughter more than me mm -hmm. is not worth your food. Good. Thank you. He says saying that. Yeah, quite sorry. Oh, my, I say, you man, I say, what's your name? No, you're my name. It's not making you stand for Kerry. If I like, as a true comma, that price can stand past Kobe. Yes. You have to do it. Grace, are you here? Yeah. Yes. It's time for church service. No other thing. Do God's things first. And then later on, family chose. That's how it's supposed to be done. Commitment. Just as you are committed to your books, that's how it's supposed to be committed. Amen. It's about trusting in God. The plan that we can make to God is in response to the many promises that he made to us. But in order to truly commit to him, we have to believe that he will deliver his promises. That's why Psalm 37 verse 5 says, Commit all your ways to the Lord's hands and trust him you will do this. Another kind of commitment is this. You are facing some kind of challenges. Then you want to take all the powers in your hand and do it. So after all, nobody will help you do it. The Bible says you have someone who will help you do. That's God. Give everything to him. All the problems to him. Leave it. And let God will solve them. Amen. Okay. Last but one on this. 1 Corinthians 16, 19 to 20. What does the Bible say? You do not know that your bodies are the temple of the Holy Spirit. Who is in you? Whom you have been received from God, you are not on your own. You are bought with the price. Therefore, honor God with your bodies. 
this your body, the curse you are talking about, eh? the sea, it's not yours. It's whose? It's for who? It's not for you. You think you are slang, your slang is for you? It's not for Eric. It's for God. Because something else lives in that body. That is your spirit. That's what it's after. So very soon, when that spirit leaves the body, this body becomes useless. It's not yours. Therefore, glorify God in this body. Do this body for any other thing that you glorify God. The later when you grow, that one is alive. But for now, commit to the Lord. Amen. Amen. Last point. Oh, that's the last point for this. Good. So far, so good. We have come to the end of the fourth one. That's commitment. Questions. Questions. Mm -hmm. Jeff? May I that question? Frank? Hold on. Commitment. Like when I committed to something, like someone, and the person <laughs> that committed, uh, committed to, like, is trying to withdraw back from you. What do you have to do? Eh? You are committed to a friend. Yeah. And the friend is withdrawing himself from you. Yeah. What do you have to do? <laughs> That's a wrong question. <laughs> the correct question is, I'm committed to a friend. He's withdrawing he's from me. First question, what have I done? Nothing. Uh, <laughs> the fir first question is, what have I done? Two. What is the cause of him withdrawing from me? Three, has something occurred that has caused this separation? But is that commitment? Uh, hold on, hold on, hold on. After answering those questions, then you ask yourself, what should I do? For instance, you're my good friend. All of a sudden, I begin to draw away from you. There's something you are doing. But what I refuse to do is to let you know what you are doing wrong. Maybe if I am with you, 30 minutes, you talk to me once in every five minutes. The rest is... Me being with you and your phone, which one do you value? Maybe your phone, so I'm sorry. Be with your phone, I'm gone. Maybe that's what you have done. Maybe that is the cause. Yes? If you can find out what the reason is, then you can know what to do. Yes. But, let me answer the question for you so that I might even help you better. The first thing to do is first, confrontation. Confront your friend and say, hey, Kwaku, nowadays the way we used to do things is that we are being separated. Is there anything wrong? Have I done something wrong? If I said something, your uncle against you, Koku you say, yeah, last time uh, the thing we discussed, Brian Enoch told me that you told him. And I didn't expect that what we discussed, you tell Brian Enoch. So you have broken my trust. Oh, sir. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah, it can happen. You have to rest for that. So first, find out what we think might have cost. Before you go to what you have done. Yes? Question. Saki? Mm -hmm. Robert? That is good. Frag? No more questions? Okay. Then we move on to the last letter on the word grace. And that is endurance. Endurance. Or yao apinisiv. Endurance. It's hard, but hold on. The fire is in your hand. It's burning you, but if I fast out there, if I fall out there, bana bana bana, ooh, bana bana bana. That is endurance. Endurance is the ability to endure an unpleasant or difficult process or situation without giving it away. 
for you have need of endurance, so that when you have done the will of God, you may receive what is promised. What has God promised you? Brother Enoch, Brother Yogan, what has God promised you? God has promised you give you a very beautiful job when you finish school. But it's not difficult to stand. So that you have to walk. I remember when I, I do my own project for the work I'm doing now. Did they have myself? I have to still train. And I always say this, the truth. I get in the train, no controller, I put a hide myself in it. God has promised me a very full future, but why am I getting the money to get the train? Still the train. I don't say where is the train though. When they catch you, don't say, that did it, so you're going to do the same. Ah. Uh, you see? But, what should I do? Should I go and do kind of wrong business to get money? I get on train, or what should I do? Most of us are like that. We have beautiful promises, but how to get there? It takes you to endure the pain you're going through. God said you're going to marry all the young girls with McCarthy very soon. Five years, ten years. Don't go. <laughs> but for now, for now, endure it. Now the hormone in your liquor, so it's not comfortable, eh? Yeah, the pouches here and the thing here, I've been there before. It's not easy, but endure. In the Amen. I mean, teaching you. Yes. You never gonna come. But to remain firm under all trial or suffering, to suffer patiently or without yielding to, bear up. I've said this already. Now, to bear with patience, to suffer without opposition or without sinking under the pressure of affliction, to bear up. And to put up and to tolerate, correct? You are doing something. People don't see what you're doing. Go on and do it. Mm -hmm. Doing something right, they are insulting you. Is it right? Before God, do it. And the more you bear up with patience, I will try. God is saying, Ah, this guy, you have a good time. There's a woman here who is praying for her husband. Her prayer is that God give him somebody who has patience. And you going through all these difficult situations, you have patience, I have to connect the two of you together. Before you realize, every step is married to you again. Amen! Don't even think about it. Eh? Amen. Amen. <laughs> so you see, that's how God works. Eh? That's how God works. You bring a situation in your life to see the quality you can produce. And then you see the quality you can produce, and you will listen to what my gift is prayer. Ah, the prayer you are praying. The answer is by this place. Before you realize, connection is in this place. By you. You don't come. You don't come to me. 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 Self-control in the hall. And then you leave, then you go. James chapter 1, verse 2. There's a little one way to find out if you are there. No, brother James, oh. James in the Bible. Very soon, we are going to zoom into powerful praises and, and worship. And we have a visitor all the way from Antwerp. We're going to combine the two. When this apostle man is singing, ah, heavens calm down. James chapter 1. James is in the New Testament. Thank you, Nana. Let's go. Nana has won five. 
and uh, Imelda three and uh, baby Makati two. Mama. I've kept all this. Uh -huh. You already get huh? mm -hmm. Read, let's hear you. Verse 2. Verse 2 to 4. Uh -huh. My brethren, count it all joy when you fall into diverse temptation. Okay. Verse 3. Knowing this, that the time of your faith, work patience. Verse 4. But let patience have her perfect work. That you may be perfect and entire, with wanting nothing. Count it all joy, my brothers, when you meet trials of various kinds. For you know that the testing of your faith produces steadfastness. And let steadfastness have its full effect, that you may be perfect and complete, lacking nothing. Sometimes you go through it like they are all tests. God tests you, but he doesn't tempt you. Sometimes situations are hard. Tiles can meet only so market and so good, so as the art of heart can build. God is testing your character. Because among the man and you pray that God give me a very good job at the ISM bank. I want to work at the Fortis Bank. I want to work at this court. I had this quality is very good, good reputation. Yeah, but let's wait, basic top. Yeah. What? Work us to you, correct it. Uh -huh. Yeah, yeah, okay. You are praying for a good job. I only have a threat. Small thing, you get angry, pissed off. Because no, no, no. You need to squeeze that thing from you first before I give you that job. Otherwise, if I let you go to that job with that character, they will suck you. Sometimes God brings things along your way. It's on the board then. Uh -huh. Then you endure it. Our last reading. There's only one way to find out if you are there. Who is reading the last reading of the day? Hebrews chapter 12, verse 2. The last person will get a big half of cake. I will. Read <laughs> Amen. Looking unto Jesus, who is the author and the finisher of our faith, who for the joy that is set before him endured the cross. Despising the shape and sat down at the right hand of God the Father. See, all that Jesus went through, there's only one thing that he went through for. Him. God showed him a picture. The picture was joy. Put the picture in front of him and say, Jesus, that's the joy. People were beating him, scorching him, putting tons on his head. Jesus was just looking at the joy. He endured the pain to the cross so that me and you will be saved. But you and me, let them say something bad about us. Hey, after church. I'm not going to get, hey, catch up, hey. You could be a, quite your end. Jesus endured to the cross. For him, he didn't do anything. But you were me, maybe we did something wrong. Hey, that elder, hmm. I saw that elder and uh, Imelda. Elder and Imelda, da 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 da. I'm the slap on Antwerp. The way elder hold Imelda, the way they walk. Hey, Imelda. Imelda. <laughs> elder here, they said, hey, they are concerned about me. They are disgracing me. I stopped church. Either it's true or it's not true, I stop church. But the Bible is Jesus Christ, He endured it. Sister, brother, whatever you are going through, endure it. A time will come, you have the joy that you're waiting for. So, the whole of last week and this week, what we have talked about is this five letter grace. G, what you give. R, 
your relationships. A, how to appreciate. C, your commitments, especially to God's work. And E, how to endure. Stand fast in all the things that you do in this life because your toil will never, ever be in vain. In Jesus' name, Amen. Amen. I hope you room for questions for 10 minutes, then we move on the cross. Question. Any question at all? There shouldn't be per se on this. If nobody has question on this, any question at all is welcome. No questions? Okay. Then we are going to move on to praises. From there to worship. Today we have two offerings. One for the district and one for the normal one.